my message today coming from the book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 40. This prophetic word from one of my <clears throat> also favorite passages of scripture. I think even speaks to this time that we are living in with so much going on in our world and so much fear that we see all around the world and in this country and all of the crazy mess we're hearing about just makes me sick to my stomach. both in the political scene, all of the crab in the basket politics that's going on. And you know what crabs do to each other? Anybody ever bought a bushel of crabs? Live crabs, all right? See, I grew up in D.C. We used to go down to the wharf and get crabs. And when you get them home, and Dr. Taylor, you from down that worked in Chesapeake, all those issues, you know what I'm talking about. If you get a bushel of crabs and you pull one out, the ones that are in the, the basket will tear the one that you're pulling out apart to keep it from getting out. We see that going on all over. All I could think about, it's just time to get right with God and do it now. Yeah. But this message from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 5, the glory of the Lord. And as I meditated on this message, and I thought about all that is going on in the world, all of the sadness, all of the horrific things we've heard of, all of the things that many of us have experienced in our lives with sickness and death and all of these things, and it seems like sometimes it's one thing after another. <laughs> However, God is still on his throne. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, he is. Still there. God still gives comfort. And there's a psalm that the hymnologist of the Bible wrote that says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. God gives comfort in your time of trouble. This message that Isaiah gives is a prophetic word of hope. It is a description also of the messenger before the messenger. And a description of what the messenger would do. Now, Isaiah understood what it was to need comfort. Here was a man that at a low point in his life, that was when God spoke to him. Now, he had just lost his good paying government job. He worked for the king. Government jobs, high government jobs, pay a lot of money. And if you look and believe some of the stuff on Facebook, certain government jobs, when you get the job, even if you only serve one term, you get full pay for the rest of your life. I'd love to have one of them jobs. Only thing about it, I don't want the headache and the mess that goes with it. Yeah, I said it and I didn't stutter. So Isaiah had lost his, his high-profile, good 
government job because his boss, the king, had died. That's the way Isaiah starts his prophetic message in the very first chapter. He also, in, in the chapter when he talks about his, his testimony, he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. He tells you, I saw what other folks had seen. Somehow or another, Isaiah is telling you, it had been there all the time, I just hadn't seen it. Right. Other folks had been going to the house of worship. They had been experiencing and seeing it. But somehow I was blind to what was going on in the house of worship. The seraphims and cherubims had been flying around crying holy, holy, holy all the time. Isaiah just hadn't seen them. But now at his time of need. Now, God had his attention. Now, he could hear what God had been asking. Who's going to go? Who shall we send? Now, Isaiah's heart was softened. And he could raise his hand and say, here am I. If nobody else will go, send me. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is, and this, this, is what, this is what God had been dealing with me all week. You know, and I, I'm going to give it a mathematical equation. If now the cherubims and seraphims had been flying around all this time and Isaiah had been not seeing them, other people had been seeing them and hearing them, then why hadn't somebody else responded? Other folks have been hearing it and seeing it, I'm sure. But nobody was willing to respond. So now, here's a newbie comes along. And he responds. So, Isaiah comes along. In a dark time in his life, and in a dark time in the life of Israel, My God. because they are in bondage. Yes, sir. Am I right about it, Dr. Taylor? Yes, sir. They're in bondage. Yes, sir. Deep. Deep bondage. Yes, sir. Their country's been taken away. Yes. They've been horrifically stripped of their identity. Hmm. And here in the midst of bondage, in the midst of the darkness of their time, at this low point in Isaiah's life, the Lord speaks to him. And out of his lowness and brokenness, God speaks to him. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Alone in the house of the Lord. When he couldn't hear nobody pray. As the old afro Americans would say, as my sister and I use that term to each other. Couldn't hear nobody pray. God spoke to him. And God gave this word to Isaiah. That the people who were in darkness would now see a light. They were still in darkness, but he gave a message of hope in it was still dark. Now I've got to ex explain something to you. Sometimes God comes to you while it's still pitch black in your life. Oh yes, he does. Yes, 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 yes. While you're still in pain, yes. while you're still shedding tears. Yes. While you're still wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. While you're still scratching your head and hair still falling out. While you're still stressed out. God will come to you in the midst of all of that. 
while you're still being kicked around and to the curb and trampled on. God will say, look up, I'm still here and I got a feeling I want you to get that everything's going to be all right because I'm here, just hold on to my hand. You might be being stepped on, but hold on to my hand. I'm dragging you through to the other side. My God. Out of his lowness and brokenness, God spoke to him. You might be unemployed, Isaiah. But you're still on my road. You're still bathing in my water. And you're still living under my roof. The sky that I said let there be and there was. You're still breathing the air that I put into you. Preach. Alone. In my house. I got a message for you, Isaiah. Alone in my house, Isaiah. I took the tongs and I seared your lips and purged the sin from your life. Nobody can unpurge that from you, Isaiah. And you know, in your lives, somebody might try to remind you of where you've been and what you were and what you did. Oh, they'll do it. They'll try to take you back. And they might whisper about you. Yes, but once God has declared your sin purged, he said, your sins, I will remember no more. Amen. Thank God. Amen. He gave a word of comfort to people while they was, it was still dark. And he gave a description of how he was going to work it out. Now, I'm almost finished. Take time. I'm at Roman numeral three, and I got two more letters to go. I got B and C. <laughs> he sent a messenger to prepare for the messenger. And he gave a description. He says, I'm going to send someone who's going to cry in the wilderness. Yeah. Now, can I just explain to you that Isaiah wrote this about a thousand years before the birth of Christ. All right. So that would be 900, let me see, I got to think backwards now, negative numbers, y'all forgive me. I got to do the math here and I might get it wrong. So that would be about nine, no, that would be about 1,005 years before the birth of John the Baptist. All right, if I'm doing the math backwards right, negative five, and then come forward, all right. All right, I'll have to check my math and my calculator later. But you know, you understand what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so therefore, he sends John the Baptist, who's five years older than Jesus, to prepare the way for Jesus. I, John the Baptist, the voice crying in the wilderness, and he tells you what he's going to say. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. We know from the New Testament, as we look back on those times, as we look at it in retrospect, we know that that's what John the Baptist did. And we know that's what he said from the evidence of the, the New Testament. That he, he, he walked through life and as, he, as, as the, 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 the angel told Zechariah, his father, that he would go and say that he would prepare the way for the Messiah and he would go through the wilderness and he would lead the people to repentance. 
and he would tell the people to prepare the way and make ready his path. And, and those are the things that he did. And he would baptize the people to repentance. And, and John did that. And the people who, who were the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders who claimed they knew the book and it jet did just the same thing that it did in Isaiah's time. They had the word, but it had not penetrated their, their hearts. They had been in the temple, but the temple hadn't been in them. They had been there where the cherubims and the seraphims had been flying around, but they missed it. My God. They were reading the words, but the words hadn't penetrated their heart. Yes, that's it. And they were asking John the Baptist, are you the Messiah? And he said, uh-uh, I'm not the one. But there's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to bend down and tie his shoes. And while he's baptizing, you know the story. Here comes Jesus. Cousin Jesus, if you will. And he says, look at it. Behold the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Now, can you see the picture of Jesus now continuing to walk along the banks? Keep on walking and everybody looking. And John is standing down in the water. And Jesus steps in the water and to everybody's surprise, including John, and I think you mentioned this in your sermon last week, walks up to him and looks right in John's eyes and says, John, baptize me. Baptize me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the interesting thing is, Jesus, if you read through the word, Jesus never baptized, not a soul, while he walked this earth. Why? Because his baptism was the comfort of the Holy Ghost, which could not come until he left the earth. And he said, John, I know what you're saying, but we got to show people by modeling what needs to be done. We got to model it for them. So, I want you to permit it to be so. That's what that word suffer in the old English means. Permit it to be so, John. Baptize me. So they'll know how to do it. And so Isaiah writes what the messenger before the messenger would do. And then he gives a description, description of what the messenger would do. Because he says that every valley shall be exalted. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. And you know, I had this picture during the night. I, I, I tell you, I haven't been sleeping too well lately because I've been getting different messages from the God in the middle of the night. And, and one night I had this, this picture, and I don't know where this came from. I had this picture of road graders. <coughs> road graders dipped in blood. And I thought, oh, that's strange. And they were going along, dipped in blood, and they were coming across mountains, knocking down mountains into valleys, and then going back on mountains and knocking down mountains into valleys. And then the next thing you know, it was just one level plain. 
And the next thing I knew, I'm thinking, where did the hill go? The hill went into the valley. And where did the valley go? The valley was brought up level with the hill. I said, now I got what Isaiah was saying. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain shall be made low. All of your rough places shall be smoothed out. And all of those rough places, and they were dipped in blood and those rough places were melted out so they were just as smooth as the top of this desk. I said, Lord, I think I got the picture that Isaiah was seeing. Lord, I thank you what you're showing me because I'm seeing what Isaiah was seeing. He says, wait a minute, I'm not finished. I got to show you what the glory is. I go. Okay, what, what is the glory? He says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it. All flesh? Yes, not just a certain few, not just an elite, not just the preacher, not just the deacons, not just the choir, not just the ushers, but all flesh, not just the holy folk, but anybody who will call on the name of the messenger. Who is the messenger's name? The messenger's name is Jesus. He's the one whose blood was dipped in those road graves. He's the one that levels down your mountains and raises up your valleys. He's the one that straightens out your rough places. When the doctor says you've got some illness, he's the one that grades over that rough place. When you're in the valley of sorrow, he's the one that brings that high arrogant mountain down and fills in that low valley. His name is Jesus. He is the glory of God. And the glory shall be revealed to whoever calls on his name. His name is Jesus. That's my glory. I don't glory in myself. Because in myself, there is no good thing. Not in Walter Jackson. But the glory is in Jesus. That is the glory of the Lord. The crowning glory of God is Jesus the Christ. My God. And it was spoken out of the mouth of the Lord. And it says in all flesh shall see it. But God, there are atheists in the world. There are folks in the world that don't believe it. There are folks in the world that are killing Christians. Wait a minute, Walter Jackson. Hold up. It ain't over till it's over. All right, now. It ain't over till I send Gabriel to blow a trumpet. It ain't over until I send him down and say enough's enough. But my word says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't care, and I'm going to tread on some dangerous ground now, but I don't care anymore. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. One day, you're going to have to say that Jesus is Lord. I don't care if you follow uh, Hare Krishna. One day, you're going to have to bow and say Jesus is Lord. I don't care if you've been following the path to Mecca. One day you better follow the, the path to Calvary or one day you're going to stand before Jesus and have to bow down and declare that Jesus is Lord because the word says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and every means every knee every knee every white knee every black knee every yellow knee every brown knee every 
blue knee, every gray knee, every green knee, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. You will confess to the glory of the Lord that has been revealed that Isaiah spoke about way long time ago. You will confess either by your free will or you'll bow down on the day of judgment, but confess you will to the glory of God. Amen. 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 Is there one this morning? Is there one this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.